Good evening and welcome to the 2023 Division III Women's Ice Hockey Selection Show. I'm your host, Will Haskett. The path to a championship begins tonight for 11 worthy teams who have put in all of the work on and off the ice this season to hear their names called this evening. The puck drops in the first round this coming Wednesday at local sites, and the ability for a team to play on home ice will continue for the higher seeds all the way through a championship showdown, which comes your way on March the 19th. As we mentioned, 11 teams make the championship, seven schools already resting easy tonight. They know they're in as conference champions and automatic qualifiers, and that leaves just Four, let's count, four precious bids for at-large selection. With hosting duties, buys, and matchups still the big unknown here tonight, let's hop right into the bracket, shall we, and get this NCAA postseason started. We begin with our first team already into the quarterfinals. The top team in the bracket is Amherst. The 2009 and 2010 national champions have been at the top of the rankings at various points this season, thanks in large part to an 18-game winning streak from December to the beginning of February. And while the ledger hasn't been perfect in the month since then, this is still a stingy team when it comes to gutting out wins, ranking top three in the nation in penalty killing and top five in shorthanded goals. The NESCAC champs enter having survived arguably the toughest conference in the country. They await the winner of our first opening round matchup with an at-large berth given to a happy bunch right now. We say good evening to Colby. Celebration time for the Mules making the tournament after a historic season. The NESCAC led to a semifinal push. 17 wins this year is a program record. They now look to add to it in an NCAA postseason with this precious at-large selection. And they host a first round matchup with Norwich. The champions of the NEHC have netted plenty of goals this season, including two more in yesterday's championship win over Elmira. The 2-0 shutout brought the season total to 117 goals scored, which is top 10 in the nation. It was the 11th shutout this season. A balanced lineup saw seven players selected to all conference teams, including senior and Frederic Guay, who was named the NEHC Player of the Year. All right, the next team getting a buy into the quarterfinals is Adrian, second best scoring team in the nation. Nets over five goals per contest with a balance attack led by Jessica Von Ruden. She is one of six Bulldogs who entered the weekend, averaging over one point per game. Sophie Goldberg is in between the pipes. She ranks in the top five in the country in both save percentage and goals against. The Bulldogs will play host to the winner of a first round game hosted by Hamilton, one of the better seasons in program history for the Continentals. History awaits as they pursue a first trip to the championship game. Mission number one is to prevent goals, and this team was better than most at doing that. Top 10 in the nation, only Amherst had a better goals against average this season than Hamilton in the always strong NESCAC. One more skate on home ice for the Continentals as they host Nazareth in the opener. The Golden Flyers going back to back to return to the bracket fresh off for another UCHC title. It was a thriller over Utica. They survived three to two with some last second heroics. They were down 2 one in the third period and went down to the final 10 seconds. That's when freshman Abby Flanagan netted the game tying goal that would force overtime. One extra session, not enough. In the second OT, a Julia Holm shot from the point was the championship winner. They're still celebrating today. The goal Golden Flyers are back in the tournament and ready to make a championship run. It wouldn't be a tournament bracket without the ladies of Plattsburgh State. Only a pandemic could slow down the Cardinal dynasty with the cancellation of the 2020 and 2021 tournaments, ending a run of five titles in six years for this program. The quest to begin a new streak and win overall championship number eight starts this year after a dominant run to the new HL title. The Cardinals have won 17 straight after another conference title on Saturday, including four wins this season over ranked teams. The win streak awaits the winner of a first round matchup, the final one in the bracket, hosted by another at large selection. That would be Middlebury. Of course, you had to have them back in the field this year. No team in the history of the sport had gone unbeaten and untied in a season before the Panthers got it done last year as national champs. This season hasn't been close to perfect, but you can't rule out the reigning champions who survived the emotion of a last second goal a season ago to still get the championship win in overtime. They look to avoid similar drama in pursuit of another title. New team in town is Suffolk, who make the tournament for the first time. This program started just five seasons ago, and it's on its way to its first tournament after sweeping the CCC regular season and tournament titles. It's also the first time this program has made it to the NCAAs in any sport since baseball did it back in 2018, and the first women's program to make an NCAA tournament since the Rams' 2007 tennis team did that. And what a journey to this moment. There are five skaters on this roster from the inaugural season to see this dream come true. So congratulations to Shanna Coate, Madison Duff, Jesse Kennedy, Natasha Savage, and Kylie Searles, who now take this team to the tournament for a first time. 
All right, two left to unveil. It's our final quarterfinal game. It's hosted by Gustavus Adolphus. The Gusties returning to the tournament with the best defense in the nation, surrendering just .77 goals per game entering Saturday's action. No surprise that goalie Katie McCoy also leads the nation in goals against. The team made it to overtime of the championship a year ago, so there's no shortage of motivation this time around. And if defense is to win this 2023 championship, this is the team to watch out for. But don't sleep on the offense either. They netted over four goals per game this year, led by Haley and Caitlin Holland. And they welcome our final at-large team of the field. That's UW River Falls, a team 5-2-2 two and two and tested this year against nationally ranked opponents. They have wins over the opponent they'll meet meet in the opener, Gustavus Adolphus. They also have wins over Middlebury and Plattsburgh State, so you have ranked opponents already in this bracket to round out a very good resume for this team against tournament teams. The Falcons enter the weekend with the top scoring offense in all of Division Three, averaging 5.7 goals per game, thanks in large part to a 35% power play percentage. Senior forward Maddie McCollins, team's leading scorer, she netted her 28th goal of the season yesterday. That set a new program record. All right, there you have it, all 11 teams competing for the opportunity to be called a national champion. For those in the first round, your games take place this coming Wednesday at local sites before four schools will host quarterfinal matchups coming up next weekend. From there, the semifinals and championship await, and you can track all the action right here on NCAA.com. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Congratulations and best of luck to all the student athletes competing in this year's championship. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets.